The heat is palpable and the coaching seat is getting hotter for three tacticians in the English Premier League. Mikel Arteta of Arsenal, Pep Guardiola of Manchester City and Jurgen Klopp of Liverpool. City are in the driving seat after taking command of the EPL title race. The Gunners are stuttering, unsure whether their well-documented history of collapsing under pressure will once again come to haunt them. The Reds in Merseyside hope to give exiting club a befitting send-off, but wobbly they are. Can the centre hold? Across the borders in Germany, in Bavaria to be precise, there is a new sheriff in town, in Bayer Leverkusen, who did toast to maiden Bundesliga title. Here in Nairobi, Sporty Monday has unique guest in the frame of Barnaba Korir, and he's gonna tell us about the Keep Keino Classic, which is all but set for this weekend. This is Sporty Monday, ladies and gentlemen. The show begins. My name is Isaac Swila Tijan. We pick it from there. It's here. Not so good in North London. No, why are you asking me about uh, North London when uh, <laughs> when All Saints has uh, lifted the 15th title? <laughs> school games. No, you know that's my uh, my no, time school. We have to put it on the spot. <laughs> yeah. it's not good in London. Yeah, he's trying okay. to run away from me. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm trying to mention because Otenga was not uh, mentioning it well. But uh, let me say this: wa Christo wa tunasema that uh, sometimes you sin against yourself. But there is one bad sin of sinning against yourself. That is what uh, one Mikel Arteta did over this weekend. Yesterday, he sinned against himself. That's the long and short of it. He sinned against himself. Chitera, but why? Action. But why are you crucifying Arteta? Uh, Unai Emery has coached uh, Arsenal. He understands Arsenal in and out. If Arsenal was beaten by uh, someone else, I would raise questions. But this is someone uh, who understands. It's like your ex. So it's a justifiable defeat. It's a justifiable <laughs> defeat. You, you, so, you examples are ex I know, right? So, the whole no, history, history. Why are you... Like them? Why are you, you, say, you think why are, it should be what, nine games winning streak. Why are you making it a big deal and yet Manchester City has lost uh, against uh, small teams. Give it, give it. If no, it's because you of your no, no, pick, 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 pick of the rest. Pick of the rest. But I'm also the Let me come in. I'm objective. Let me come in, Shitera. It's a big deal because where the league is at this point, there's no margin for error for the three. Then teams. number two, that is on, he's talking about small teams. Mm. The same Villa. What happened when they met Man City just the other day? So four. there's no margin for error. Four. But, but you so see, really, in football, in football, uh, you have to understand <laughs> that. I've given you, I've given you a very good example that Unai Emery has coached uh, Arsenal. He understands Arsenal in and out. And in football, you agree with me. A, a, a coach who meets a team that he has handled before, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for someone to win mm -hmm. against that team. Can you see what Alonso is doing? No, no, no. I will give. No, no, no. I will give you. I'll give you a last. I'll give you a last. I'll give you a last. I'll give you a last example. A very shaky Chelsea. And Pochettino beat Tottenham uh, <laughs> three, four, uh, it was 4 just, one. Just Ateta totally sinned against him. Otenga, Kevin so Otenga, don't, guys, don't cry is here. Kevin Otenga, don't welcome cry. to the program. <laughs> it's not all lost. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Arsenal, Villa Clash, Kwa Kiswaili, Intasema Kwamba, Ukondo Mganga, Kuingia Kwa, Ama Mchawi, Kuingia Kwa Mganga. Unai Emery made uh, Mikel Arteta yesterday look Tactless. Mm. He was the better tactician yesterday. And so of course, of course, Otenga was on the school games beat. He'll be telling us much more about that. Mm -hmm. Zeta Jimoy, hi today. Very okay. Very okay. And do you know that? <laughs> so for me, um, one mistake. Jesus is an impact player when he's being introduced in the team, not a starting first 11. Mm -hmm. Something else. Saka now, Ame Shanguvu. Wing Yaka, I know uh, Jesus is the one who's supposed to play in that wing. But again, they 
ile motisha liko nayo from the start of the the the, uh, the league until now and I am Asia. So for me those are the two mistakes that I I up to the, seven, so, up to the seven years, Stera, Stera. So, the let's have seven times. So, seven so, times. Oh, oh. so as I said and I will continue saying here, the there. league will be taken by City and will be still here all of us. Of course, when it comes to EPL the, the panelists can never agree. They can go on and on. And of course, we'll be going deep into the EPL in the second hour. The Gunners dropping points, Liverpool dropping, Can City nick it again. They can we'll also be drop from you. But to the question of the day, question of the day, we are asking you your thoughts on the concluded school games competition that ended in Machakos County. SMS lines 22422, hashtag Sporty Monday. We get the conversation going at Citizen TV Kenya, at Isaac Swila, at Zita Jimoy, Steve Shitera, Jacob Isia will be sampling your feedback at the tail end of the program. And of course, the national school games ended in Machakos with winners being crowned in various categories as the teams now shift gear to the East African school games set for Uganda with, of course, Embu, RFC reigning supreme in the rugby 15th title. Or oh, Teng, I'll begin with you because you won this beat basically for one week uh, running. Uh, what do you make out of that competition, having covered every bit of it? Uh, the five-day extravaganza was really an entertaining one. Uh, we saw All Saints uh, lifting the Rugby 15's title, mm -hmm. actually their maiden uh, title. And uh, uh, that shows that uh, the level of competition now in Eastern and within Central in Rugby 15's is mm -hmm. now coming up. We've seen uh, uh, Western and Nyanza mainly dominating in the rugby scene. Mm -hmm. But now when teams like All Saints, uh, uh, Kitondo who finished third, Coming up, it just shows you how uh, the competition, how uh, the level of competition has gone up, and is Eastern teams and uh, Central teams are coming up. Talking about the final, uh, Butler versus uh, All Saints, uh, we can say that uh, Butler were the better side. They had a good game, but tactically, Benson Mwenda of uh, All Saints, he tactically won that game for All Saints. Uh, kwa Kiswahili nitasema kwamba alitumia akili kushinda mechi hiyo. Uh, why? Because uh, uh, All Saints knew that they couldn't overpower Butler in terms of mass, in terms of the body mass. So they couldn't score a try against uh, Butler. So they forced Butler into making mistakes. Uh, Butler conceded penalties, four penalties, and uh, uh, All Saints uh, scored all those penalties. When you look at the game, uh, uh, Butler were the first uh, team to score a try. Uh, they scored the second try, uh, missed the conversion, a uh, very straightforward con uh, conversion. Uh, all Saints came up, uh, levelized, uh, or got a penalty in the first half to cut or to reduce the tie to 10-3. Mm -hmm. And when they came to second half, they knew that they couldn't beat Butler in, in terms of mass, so they forced Butler to make mistakes and uh, they considered those penalties. And that is something uh, Shimenga Livondo, the head coach of Butler, mm -hmm. has to worry about because they have been doing this. Uh, in, the, in the group stage against All Saints, mm -hmm. we saw them also consider a penalty uh, in the semi-final. Uh, they also considered a penalty in the... Uh, penalties in the final, they did the same. And when you look at All Saints, mm. uh, they used the same trick uh, to win their semi-final, mm. uh, to win their final. So I'll hail coach Benson Mwenda. Mm. He, tactically, he tactically outwitted uh, Shimenga mm. Livon. Just hold on there. Uh, I'll come to you, Isia. And if you look at these uh, images we have on screen, basically that's all Saints Otenga is talking about. Of course, we know there's a heavy downpour, but look at that surface, Isia. How much does this present a challenge to tactical formations, to coaches in games such as this? Uh, number one is to say that... Um, we have been talking here, day in, day out, that uh, there's a problem about uh, our uh, playing facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, It's a problem that we have, a major problem. If you go to uh, the countries that do well in a different uh, sport, you find out that uh, some of the best facilities are at the school level. And we should be stabbed, really, when our students are playing at, uh, in such surfaces. Mm -hmm. And because at the end of the day, uh, these are the people who are coming up.
Yeah. There are uh, dangers of injuries there when you have such a service. And again, the coaches are left, uh, you know, with um, a puzzle of how they are going to not only tackle the opponent, but also play differently when it comes to such a surface. But uh, granted, I need to respond to Watenga. You know, I was so kind when you were speaking. I didn't want to inter interrupt you. <laughs> mm. You see, to start by saying that uh, Butler were the better side, mm. then uh, how do you lead 10 by, uh, by half time, and then in the second half you are defeated? Mm. It means that uh, you are not good. You're not good. Let me say that. So give uh, Austin their flowers. That um, And of course, when you talk about the... The, the, the technical ability, you see, you talk about the tact the coach that used. That is all about the game. Mm. If you are tactically good, then you are going to carry the day. But basically, it's very interesting, Sweden. The other day, we were just talking about uh, how South Coast Pirates has been promoted uh, in the, from the coast now. They will be playing in the, in the top league, uh, Kenya Cup. Yeah. Uh, now we are seeing... Um, all Saints, by the way, the coach All Saints, uh, Bonamwenda, also handles uh, MBRFC, mm. which means if we continue seeing this kind of trend, we're also going to have maybe in the near future a team that could play in the championship or maybe in the Kenya Cup, you know, from that side, which means uh, that uh, we'll be diversifying the game so that we don't have just one region uh, producing, our, uh, you know, at least who are participating in rugby. It's a very good gesture. Now, going to the East Africa, you know, uh, All Saints was there uh, last time uh, with Butler. We are hoping that there's going to be something extra, especially after going now after as, as the champions. The other time they were runners up, right? Mm. So they go as the champions, and we are saying there's going to be a lot of uh, scrutiny. Everybody will be eyes on them, mm. like you are carrying our flag. As it, uh, real quick, after the national games, rather, which we had, uh, attention now shifts to the East Africa mm -hmm. school games, which basically will be in August in Uganda. Probably in terms of preps and readiness, how should probably these teams are ready for this uh, regional competition? I think it comes to the uh, whereby we have to support the teams because mm. at the end of it, you know, as when we go mostly in the East African games, we're going, to, we, we're always, we're being defeated by other teams that, let's say for, for example, Uganda, because they're going up to form six, for us it's up to form, uh, form four. So they have, a, they, ha, they, they're a little bit older than us. But again, we're not looking into, we're not uh, looking in that uh, perspective, but again, it's just, um, more training, support from the what from the national or from from where even sponsorship for the, to sponsor the East African Games on how they can be ready to go and fight, handle the East African Games. That is what I can say. Okay, and uh, Shitera, uh, Butere actually, you, your team actually was one of the only two teams to retain their national yeah, title, yeah, and probably we are seeing part. Western really uh, coming out strongly in terms of sports. We talked about rugby last time. We are seeing teams like Butere now again showcasing their metal. Mm -hmm. I think uh, before now we head to uh, Uganda in August. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have to wait for the second term school games. Mm -hmm. Uh, which are more electrifying because uh, that is where we get to see football and uh, get to see talent. Mm -hmm. uh, but as uh, Zita said, I think the organizers should look at a way of um, uh, capping uh, the age so that uh, we can have uh, uh, the, the, the age limit rather than the, uh, going by the class or the level of education you are at. We cannot blame Uganda because that is their uh, system. But again, just like uh, they have done uh, at uh, Safaricom Chapadimba, that it is under 20. So let us have students under 16 or under 18 to participate in the uh, East Africa school games. Because when you say they are just students, then we find uh, from six students who are at a level of uh, a university students here in Kenya uh, playing in the secondary school game. So uh, organizers really need to look at a way of um, uh, uh, normalizing that situation but so you that you it can uniformity, be fair. Uniformity. But yeah. uh, what I always say, Shitera, is that uh, if uh, the East African flag, mm -hmm. uh, if the, the region cannot agree on this aspect yeah, of age, yeah. Just get it right as a country here, as Kenya, so that we say, uh, we know we are operating with under 16 in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Let them be under 16s. 
if they lose uh, to 20 years old, 21s there, mm. it's okay. But you know, as far as developing the game is concerned, we are, we, we are scoring it. Because at the end of the day, it profits nothing if uh, people are winning at school level, but you cannot produce good players with some longevity. You know, for, for the national teams. That's why the other day, uh, and Tanzania, I think they, they, they worked on that. Uh, and you see some of the players, maybe you saw them playing the school games, playing the, the under 18s for the national team, until now they are active with their national team, senior teams, because they were young. So if we cannot agree on that, and actually it's a very good proposal as you raise it, then let us get it right as Kenyans, so that we make sure that anybody who goes there, is under 16. When I used to cover school games, I remember there were those cases. Mm. I don't know whether there are those cases anymore, yes. but I want to believe that the people we are taking to Uganda are indeed under 16s. Hmm. And o Otenga, you are there basically, and the question, as the CS says, every time we are having the school games, there has been a question of age cheating. Yeah, probably having been there for one week, did this rear its ugly head? Uh, I didn't see any uh, team mm -hmm. protesting about uh, the cases of uh, age cheating mm -hmm. because I remember uh, the uh, Secretary General uh, David Ngugi had earlier warned that uh, any school that will be found uh, uh, having uh, age cheating cases, mm -hmm. uh, it would uh, face uh, disciplinary measures. So uh, it was a uh, fair competition. Uh, we saw uh, a fair level of the game and uh, there were Absolutely, I, I didn't hear any cases of cheating. Mm -hmm. And I think with the introduction of the new registration system, I think it's NEMIS. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult uh, for you to enter an, uh, uh, an overage student because uh, they are being tracked by that registration they did in class one, I think. So the students who are playing, I think, can be tracked back. So I think the system is working so well in Kenya. And uh, that's why I'm saying, uh, we should, as East Africans, we should... Uh, they should borrow a leaf from us. Mm -hmm. They should borrow a leaf from us. Mm -hmm. No, no, they should... Yeah, they, actually. No, no we, we are not blaming them. Mm -hmm. We are not... They are actually in high school, but they are in Form 6. You see? Mm -hmm. So they are still in high school. Mm -hmm. But you might be in high school in Form 6. Let's say you are um, 19 years old, playing against Form 4s in Kenya, who are... Uh, 14. Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so you have an advantage, and that's why Uganda has dominated for a very, very long time. It's not that we are not competitive, it's just because there is that uh, age difference. It doesn't mean that uh, we cannot compete because uh, Ugandans uh, have much, uh, they go up to Form 6. Uh, we, we find, for example, in hockey girls, we are the defending champions in East Africa, volleyball boys and girls, we are the defending champions. So let us just do our part here in Kenya, uh, know where our level is, and we shall continue nurturing talent. Mm -hmm. And see, maybe as we wrap up, uh, we still have uh, MBRFC on screen. Uh, do you think <laughs> how far can they go in this competition? They are good. You see, uh, Aswila, mm -hmm. The history of um, the team and what uh, uh, mm. Coach Mwenda and, of course, the administration mm. of the school all Saints have yeah, done sure. mm. within a very short time mm. is really phenomenal. Mm. Uh, for starters, mm. Mwenda has been doing this before as a player. Mm. A coach also, uh, Kangaru High, mm -hmm. and uh, with them, several times he even took them to the East Africa mm. uh, games. It uh, means that uh, he knows the, 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 the terrain well. Mm -hmm. yeah, and having been there last uh, edition, mm -hmm. then uh, coming home and uh, dethroning the, the, the national champions, mm -hmm. it means there's something that is uh, working there. So basically, I think uh, we should expect uh, more going to the East African Games. We should expect more going to East Africa, says Isia. And now we have Zita Jimoi on the scoreboard just to give us the school games competition in detail. Zita? Thank you so much, Swila. I'm just here to tell you which schools have uh, booked slots f to present uh, Kenya into East African Games that will be happening in August. Only two teams have uh, defended their title, that is Butere Girls in basketball and Musinga Boys in hockey. Um, as we start with, um, um, with rugby, 15th All Saints Aimbu in East African region were the first but Butula Boys and Western. You know, Western, they're good. In, uh, in what in games they are the second one in Kitondo East um, East from East region they are the
the third one, and those are the uh, the teams that will be representing us in the East African game in the 15th um, uh, rugby. And then it comes to basketball in girls, Butere, uh, Butere, Butere girls in Western region defended their title, and then followed by Bu uh, Buruburu girls, and again uh, from Nairobi, and then Kayatua from Coast. Uh, Coast, uh, Coast teams are really doing very well, actually, in these uh, in school games. <laughs> Uh, next, we go to the basketball uh, basketball in boys. That is uh, Dr. Agri in Coast Region. They were the first uh, doing this, and then uh, they were they reclaimed their what their their title because they won it in 2022. Agoro Sare from Nyanza Region. I know when you talk about Agoro Sare, people always look at the what the uh, uh, football part of it. They are doing very well again in basketball. They'll be representing us in the East African Games, and then Lesa Hills in Rift Valley. Again, since what Rift Valley to Kimbi Pekeake, Pia to that chairs a basketball. They will be representing us in the um, in the what in the basketball handball boys, Kimilili boys, and Western Region. They they became they became fast, and then uh, that is Hospital Hill uh, from Nairobi Region. Uh, Sonic boys from Rift Valley. They will be representing us in handball. That is in East African game. Uh, Saint Luke Kimilili reclaim the title they last won in 2019 um going forward let's look at uh, the handball uh, handball in girls that is a uh, moy girls kamusinga from western they are doing very well in handball they will be presenting us in east african they became they became first in national uh, game and then katara girls in eastern region and then murinduko secondary in from rift valley hey rift valley ni kama tunajifanya vizuri moy girls kamusinga reclaim their titles which they won in 2022 Again, in hockey, Kamsinga boys defended their title, that is from Western St. Anthony boys, Kitale, where? from Rift Valley, doing well in hockey. Again, again, you cannot say that in football, they are doing even much better. And then St. Charles Luanga from Coast Region, doing very well. Kamsinga defended, again, their title. Um, as we go on in hockey, in girls, Tigoi girls, uh, Tigoi girls from Western, uh, they um, actually won their maiden, maiden that is a uh, in the national school games. And then Yamira girls from Nyanza doing very well in hockey. And then St. Joseph girls from Kitale, Rift Valley doing very well in hockey. Those are the schools that will be representing us in East African school games come August. Back to you, Sila. Uh, thank you, uh, Zita Jimoy, breaking it down there for us, how the school games went down at the Machakos Boys High School. And of course, one of that team that were victorious is Meru RFC, or Embu RFC rather, they call themselves the Saints. And you can see we have a, a trophy here that they won. And we have uh, the coach, uh, probably welcome to the program and uh, introduce yourself. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my voice is not so much well because of the shouting. My name is Benson Monda, coach All Saints Embu. Coach yeah. All Saints Embu. Yeah. So how is it coaching the Saints? And we can see you back this title, uh, title maybe. What worked out for you? Okay, let us uh, let me say that we, we have been trying. Mm -hmm. We started back in 2022. Uh, we went for the Nationals. We were defeated. We came back in 20, 2023. We were number two after, uh, after Butula. Now we are back in 2024 and we are winners now. Mm -hmm. So it has been a journey, step by step, and uh, we really wanted it. Even the boys really wanted it, and we wanted to stay with the home, uh, with the cup at home, because we are the host in Eastern, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And probably the question before the uh, panelists come in, the question mm -hmm. is, you're national champions, yeah. now you're going to East Africa. Mm -hmm. That's where there's a challenge. Yeah. Are you ready for this? And how are you looking forward uh, as we go to East Africa, which will be in Uganda, basically? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, uh, we must go back to the drawing board because we know uh, whatever is happening uh, will be happening in Uganda. We have from five and six who are better heavier than us. We were in Rwanda last year. We faced them. So I think we are going to beef up the, the training. Or, uh, we do more work. We go back to the gym, hit the gym harder, and maybe we go for more. Uh, we will go for more, more. Uh, what do we call them? We will have to go and expose our boys into more all bigger uh, matches. Matches. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can be using uh, Embo RFC 
which still I'm the coach, because they are bigger and they are in university. We expose them. And so eat that, more. Yeah, and eat more. <laughs> yeah. And beef up. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, Probably, is, is there you? Yes, uh, uh, Coach Mwanda, congratulations first uh, Thank you. For, for, for the feed. But yeah. the question is, uh, this project has, uh, appears to have uh, grown very fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because you're talking about uh, about three, four years. Yeah. You're doing what you're doing now. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us what is that special thing you are doing with the team mm. and as a school to get where we are because uh, uh, that gentleman seated next to you mm. was covering the games in uh, Machakos yeah. and he was like, uh, I know these guys will, li will, lose. Yeah. They will lose, but something is happening. What is the magic behind it? Okay, let me first say that uh, I'm a RDO, that is Rugby Development Officer, and always we look at the young boys who are training who are doing it in the primary schools i used mostly nakuru kids who have been in training in primary schools so when they are coming up to grow when you take them uh, from the from the primary then they come and join the school, the high school so they have experience so it's you about to, de to develop more to them or to show them the game at a different angle yeah uh, and the question of development of uh, of rugby, the way we are doing it in this country, yeah. uh, you have heard about the talk of uh, so much concentration from the western side of this country, mm. but now we are seeing uh, Kitondo and also now Austin from Embu mm. uh, doing something good. Tell us even about your scouting. Uh, is it something that you can say that there is fairness, there is balance as far as the, the spread of the game is concerned at that level? Yeah, that's true. There, there is balance because now we cannot say Whatever it is getting, whatever we are developing in Eastern or in Central, it is whatever they are developing in Western. So when these guys get into the game earlier, they will have the skills, whatever they have. And you will have to improve on your side, on the physical side. So that, because the Western guys are fit, uh, they are physically fit. Huge. Yeah, they are huge. Mm -hmm. So in Eastern, you see it's smaller guys, maybe and faster guys. So the more you go to the physical fitness, it is the better side for you. Mm -hmm. Basically, before maybe I, I, I just a hand over, uh, there, there's a question of, uh, um, uh, Otenga was telling us that uh, mm. you capitalized on mistakes of, yeah. uh, uh, of Butula mm. and uh, you got them with the kicks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, was it just a, a coincidence or it's something that you had planned? Was it your game plan indeed? Okay, first of all, let us come back here in the pool games. Mm -hmm. in the pool games, I was, uh, it was 12-9 after we finished our pool games. So I they knew... Won, they won, for sure. Yeah, they won. So when we came into the second game, uh, the final, uh, okay, we knew we were lagging behind, but we didn't give up the spirit. And our, I had all the techniques. I knew it is all about uh, defense, and the kicking side I was better. So I used whatever the, my skill better than them. They were fit, they were physically fit, they were eating hard, but I defended and I went for the points. How did you like the pitch? I, it was, oh, okay, the, 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 pitch, uh, the pitch was not that nice. In fact, if the pitch was good, even as we would have showed them the better game that we have. Because we drew our speed and our skills, I know we are good and we can do better. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, probably Isi has talked about uh, the muddy pitch, maybe because of the downpour. Yeah. But across the country, the mm. issue of facilities, facilities, is a major concern, yeah. even at the national level. Mm. Probably a lack of requisite facilities at the grassroots at Mashinani. Mm -hmm. How is it impacting or impeding talent development? Okay, in Troka, we can say that uh, in part of uh, facilities, we are lacking facilities. But uh, we, have, uh, we need to improve in, on that because you can see as uh, they chose uh, us to use Machakos Boy, Machakos High School, where there was a stadium still that we would have used different areas. I think uh, the, the guys who are in the, in the control room about that, mm -hmm. they should see in a wider picture how we, can, we would have changed the pitches so that we would have a, we would have a change of the pitch. Better playing surface. Yeah, better, yeah, better surface. playing surface, that is all. And of course, Kinyua, we mm. wish you well with the Saints, yeah. even as you head to, to East Africa. And of course, we'll be keeping track of the progress and even the performance in Uganda. Yeah, thank and, you so much. And thank you for making time for the program. Okay, thank you.
And now let's cross over to Kisumu, where after nine months of rigorous grassroots football covering each and every region of the country, the curtains came down on the 2023-2024 20, 